Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of me failing miserably to rank something that you love and offending nearly everyone in the process whilst we give free advertisement to some random product on the side. Tube Buddy, hi there. Thank you uh, for popping up on the side there. And I'm sure you'll be sending me a check for 50p for advertising to the two people that's going to watch this video. Now, welcome to the two people. Uh, we're going to be ranking Paradox Games, one of my favourite game studios, although their DLC sort of practices are a little bit shady. Uh, I'm going to be saying that now. Um, of course, they're a little bit shady, a little bit exploitative, but they are brilliant games. So I, can't, I can't complain. So we're going to be ranking them from best to worst. And of course, we're going to start with March of the Eagles. Now, this game is fucking amazing, guys. One of the best games I've ever played. I can't believe the depth, the intensity of this game. I couldn't stop playing when I first got it. It was just so good, so unbelievably good. And I can't believe no one plays this game anymore. Of course, that's all lies. It is absolute dog shit. F tier. If there was a tier for pure and utter dog shit. In fact, we are going to call this dog shit. And we are going to put in brackets March of the Eagles because it is that bad. It, it deserves its own tier. It doesn't even fit in the box. But dog shit, dog shit, March of the Eagles tier is specially reserved for that absolute piece of trash. Um, now, let's go on to some of the historical games. Imperator Rome, I've heard it's got better now, but its release was not good, and it, it wasn't brilliant, and it's never really brought me back. Solid E tier, solid. In terms of how Paradox games go, it's, uh, it, yeah. It's got to be E tier. It's got to be E tier, guys. I'm so sorry. All those stands out there who enjoy playing it now. No excuses. When that game came out, it was fucking awful. Like, it was just shit. Like, it, it wasn't terribly bad in terms of, oh, I can't play this game. It's just so boring that you'd never really want to play it again. So that's the reason why it's in E tier. The problem I have here now is the rest of these games are really good. Um, so, how are we going to differentiate between them all? Of course, EU4, Europe Universal is 1. No, you, you, EU4, I'm going to call that EU4. It's, it's Ropa Versalis 1. Ropa Versalis 1, what a great game. Fantastic. Ropa Versalis, never seen such a good game in my life. Uh, of course, EU4, it's replayability, it's depth. Um, its uniqueness in terms of picking a nation anywhere in the world and it playing completely differently to another nation. I mean, when I say completely differently, build an army, conquest some motherfuckers. Uh, yeah, there isn't that much uniqueness in the, the difference in the conquest, but of course, you've got so much depth there and so much fun. And there's a load of mods for the game that make it so much more fun, I would say. Now, let's go, still, uh, no, Vic, Vicky 2. I'm sorry, Vicky 2 stands. It's D tier. It's D tier. It's got to be D tier. It, it, it is incredibly deep. It, I just don't find it that fun. Uh, and that is my personal opinion. I know I'm going to get all you guys hating on me now. A, a lot of people of Vicky 2 stands who would have that in S. But for me, it's D tier. I don't really find it that fun to play or that replayable. Uh, some of the mechanics seem kind of, kind of limiting, and of course it's pretty old now. I, I do look forward to Vicky 3 though. When Vicky 3 comes out, I'm going to play the hell out of it and see how they do with that. But in terms of like, European Universal is you kind of take a nation, turn it into anything. Victoria 2, you're locked into certain paths. And that's the other reason why I'm going to put Hearts of Iron 4 in B tier. Uh, now you... They've brought out a lot of DLC to make nations play uh, uniquely, have different paths you can go, like becoming the Kaiser in Germany rather than being Hitler. Um, but for me, I'm not a huge Hearts of Iron fan. I loved Hearts of Iron 3 for a long time, but I didn't play anywhere near as much as EU4. And you've got to remember, this is a tier of 
uh, Paradox games, guys. So they're all fucking really good. Uh, and I think it's one of those where if you like that era of history, World War II, Hot Time 4 is your go-to, your favourite game, your absolute go-to game. But for me, I don't find World War II too interesting. So that's probably why I'm a bit of a Napoleon Total War stan, even though a lot of people think it's shit. Um, and I'm not really that much of a fan of Hearts of Iron 4, but it is very in-depth. Um, and it is fun to roll over nations with your massive army of tanks. Um, and when I say tanks, I don't mean Russians, I mean genuine tanks um, coming over the hill. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's, it's not my, my favourite Paradox game, I've got to say. Um, Stellaris. Or Elaf as we like to say in uh, this this area. Why is the, the R not coming down there? Elaf. Elaf. Well, Elaf is a brilliant, brilliant space game. But again, it's one of those where if you're into that, you would probably rank it A or S. Uh, but is it as good as Endless Space or any of those games? I'm not sure, but it is good. It is decent. In terms of replayability, I kind of feel like, you know, Eventually, it becomes kind of samey. The same with all the games, really. When you get to the snowball stage, you just bang, 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 destroying everyone. But I, I just feel like, you know, Europa Universalis, Crusader Kings has a bit more depth. Uh, and of course, CK is going up there. That's Crusader Kings 2. But I'm guessing Crusader Kings 3 hadn't come out when this list came out. Uh, but both Crusader Kings 2 and Crusader Kings 3 are amazing games. And it if you are interested in getting started on a Paradox game, that is probably the game I would recommend. CK2, I believe it's free now. So get started on that if you want to get started on a Paradox game. Get on CK2. Um, smash some people. Kill some babies. Kill your rival. Seduce your lover. Do whatever you want. Like, basically, <laughs> do whatever you want. And hopefully your whole dynasty doesn't die in the process because then you lose, okay? But yeah, CK is really good really fun and it's basically Europa Universalis with role play like it's I love the role play element and playing someone how they would play CK3 even builds onto that to make your actions impactful a lot more mean that you know if your your player has a trait that is against uh, what they would normally do and you choose the, the the option as the stress mechanic I love that because in CK2 you know your traits added to your stats but you could take actions that were completely out of character for your character. Uh, you know, if your character has wrath and uh, uh, it's like someone killed your daughter and then you release them from prison, there's no <laughs> problem with that. Whereas CK3 does really, really um, um, add into that roleplay element. I love it. It's brilliant. It's so fun. It's so fun. Uh, and now we have sort of the building, the building games. And of course, City Skylines, the best city builder, I believe, of all time. Fucking amazing. So in-depth um, in terms of what you can do. You can have so much fun with that game. More realistic than, say, SimCity. And, uh, <laughs> let's, let's look at these city builders that have come out recently. Sim City to whatever the hell they just called it, Sim City trademark, the new Sim City, absolute shocker. So paradox, well done, fair play to you for taking the action of doing that. And that's led on to say Surviving Mars, and they also have Surviving the Aftermath now, but I haven't played that too much, so I'm glad it's not here on the list to rate. Um, but yeah, Surviving Mars, solid. In terms of paradox games, go, it's not better than Hearts of Iron, all on the same level. So I've got to stick that there surviving mars it's good it's fun replayability again is another kind of issue i'd say with it uh, same with stellaris you, for me it doesn't once i've built a great civilization on mars it doesn't really drag me back in to do that all again whereas europa universalis build a mega prussia and i'm like okay i have to build a mega prussia what should i do next okay i'll be mega france or um try and uh, re, uh, rebuild the Mo uh, Moogles. You know, it, it's, there's so many options there. With Surviving Mars, I know the difficulty, the different options, and apparently the DLC has added a lot of late game depth to the game, which I felt like it needed very much early on. I played this a lot early on, not recently that much. So 
That's why I put Surviving Mars at C, but you've got to remember C for a Paradox game is like an A for <laughs> nearly every other game. So don't get too upset that I'm putting putting them down here. I mean, the only tier that, that is bad for other games is the dog shit March of the Eagles and E probably the Imperator Rome. But yeah, Prison Architects. Oh, I love this game. I love this game so much. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. You're gonna hate me. You put Prison Architect above Hearts of Iron 4. That is sacrilege. Genuine paradox sacrilege. But Prison Architect is cool. It's great. It's fun. You know, Hearts of Iron 4 is serious in, in a lot of cases. Serious game. Prison Architect is just fun. And I, I, I do like the replayability. It does struggle with that again. But as I say, you build different prisons, maybe build a minsec prison, then sell it, then build a max security prison with the gangs, the gang mechanic now. It's just added so much to the game. And I remember buying it when it first came out as early access. Don't buy early access games, by the way, guys. <laughs> but um, don't be like me. Uh, obviously, you can see, don't be like me. Uh, I'm wearing an absolutely ridiculous hat just for your amusement. Um, but yeah, it, early on it did struggle with that but now with all the added mechanics I think it's really hit its stride it's brilliant it's fun and uh, I do feel dirty putting it above Hearts of Iron and I'm sure plenty of you will be absolutely fuming with that uh, but for me I love it uh, it's not S tier though definitely not S tier it, it doesn't hold a candle to EU4 Crusader Kings or City Skyline to be honest none of these games really do I think those three games are the games they've really just smashed it out of the park with I mean a lot of people would argue the same for Hearts of Iron 4 but yeah I'm not bothered about World War 2 guys what can I say what can I say so what do you think of my horrendously offensive and horrendous ratings I'm sure you're writing right now comment down below please like um, I don't really have any Paradox series on the channel that much, but I do have Total War and I will be doing some Paradox series. As I used to stream Paradox games a lot, um, so I don't know whether my Prussia campaign is on the channel as just big videos. Maybe it is, so go check that out guys, and thank you very much for watching. Subscribe, like, comment, you know what to do. Thank you very much for watching guys, and I'll see you again on the next video.